Secondly, we are continuing the series of Psalm 34 for our meditations as we prepare to come to the table. <clears throat> Forgive my voice, seems to be wanting to leave me. Uh, but I'd like to try something different here, a little bit. Um, I think the slides are going to be projected. Maybe not. But if not, uh, okay, thank you. Um, what I'd like to do is I will, read the, um, I will read the inspired introduction to Psalm 34, it, is, it isn't on the slide. But what I'd like you to do, once I asked you to stand, is to recite with me verses one through three. And this is in anticipation that a number of you, families and individuals, have told me that you took on my challenge uh, to memorize Psalm 34 by the time we we're done with this series. Should not be that hard, we're doing one a week. And so uh, we'll, we're looking at verse three today. So maybe I'll do this continually in the future, but the slides won't be on the screen. The words won't be on the screen. So please rise. A Psalm of David when he pretended madness before Abimelech who drove him away and he departed. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Oh Lord, we, we praise you that we can even know that we are a chosen people. We are your people in order to proclaim your praises who called us out of darkness and into your marvelous light. And Lord, we pray that you would enable us now by your indwelling Holy Spirit to learn from your word, to delight in it, and thus be conformed to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> I think I was <clears throat> singing so loud those songs of victory, I'm starting to lose my voice. <laughs> it's a good way to lose your voice though. Well, last week we looked at verse two of this, and we saw that we, there are times when we should boast. There is a certain way that we are called to boast. We're to boast in the Lord and who he is and what he has done all the time, it turns out, and thus encourage those who are not doing well, who are afflicted, who are humbled, and that they might be encouraged. And when we encourage them by this kind of boasting in the Lord, we can then all together magnify the Lord and exalt his name together. We are commanded, we see that in this verse, this is the blessing that we have, dear family, every Lord's Day when we worship together. We do this. We boast in the Lord together. Whether we're conscious that I, I'm boasting now, but that is what we're doing. We are magnifying him together. And we're exalting his name together. And we're learning to do that. So David was calling everyone really in this psalm, especially uh, all who are humbled and who are made glad by those boasting in the Lord to magnify the Lord together to magnify the Lord together. And magnify means to speak, here generally, to speak and to act for the glory of another, to esteem them greatly and to extol them, to lift them up. Psalm 69 verse 30 says, I will praise the name of God with a song, praise God we've been doing that, and will magnify him with thanksgiving. We sing his praises and we magnify him with thanks. And David was also calling the people of God to exalt his name, to exalt him as a congregation, as an assembly of people who are called out by God. Psalm 122 says, I was glad, David said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. He longed to be there. And we should also be glad, I, I know we are glad, to worship the Lord together and to magnify him together. Psalm 111 says, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. I believe we learn how to, what that means to praise him with our whole heart together. To exalt means to hold someone up very high and when we exalt his name, we are praising his character, we're praising his works in history and we have the joy of doing that in the assembly of the upright. We praise God, praise God when we think of those who are under persecution. They don't assemble like this in comfort. They can't even hardly assemble, many, many places. But praise God, we can. And we're to exalt his name, magnify his name. So before we gather each Sunday, and I'm talking Saturday night, Sunday morning, <clears throat> we can and should prepare for this calling. This is a calling to magnify God 
and to exalt him. We don't always feel that way. So first of all, I would suggest being faithful in our individual worship, in our personal daily devotions, in our quiet times. To learn to exalt the Lord there, even if it's a short time, to exalt the Lord, to pray to him in secret, as it says in Matthew 6. That kind of relationship with him and to seek his face. Secondly, in family worship, where we learn again more how to exalt him uh, together. In fact, it's a training ground in a sense. We're training, certainly parents are training children in this, training our children, but really we're all being trained. And then before each corporate worship, uh, it's helpful, I believe, to pray, uh, maybe Saturday night or or Sunday morning or both, uh, pray that the Lord would prepare your hearts I believe, frankly, that is part of what it means to come to the Sabbath day, is that kind of preparation of heart. And ask the Lord to prepare you in your heart and prepare the hearts of others around you to have hearts ready to uh, magnify him and to exalt him. We can't do that in the flesh. And it's also helpful to read the, the passage of scripture. I think most of you, many of you, do that. When I send out the announcements on Tuesday, you see the scripture, you start reading it then maybe. Many, of, many more of you uh, read it when I send out the bulletins and you know the scripture and you look at it. And we used to ask our family, well, what do you think Pastor Phil is gonna say on this passage? And eh, a lot of times we didn't get it right, but anyway, it made us think of, Think about what is this word? We have to think about the word in advance. The the confession, chapter 21 says this. God is to be worshiped everywhere in spirit and truth, as in, first of all, private families daily, and in secret, each one by himself, more solemnly in the public assemblies, which are not carelessly or willfully to be neglected or forsaken. And so coming here to worship together is such a huge blessing. Let me just mention three very briefly as we come to the table to exalt his name. First of all, we are blessed because we get to stir each other up to love and good works. We are, the, the flame is fanned here and we help each other in that. We need each other, dear, dear people. We need each other each week to be built up in love and good works uh, much more probably than we usually recognize. Secondly, we are blessed when we realize again that we are part of his body. We are part of this body and we are not alone. We need each other and we are part of a universal assembly, praise God, uh, with a great cloud of witnesses that have gone before us. And then finally, we are blessed as we exalt his name together each Lord's day because we are preparing for doing so forever in our eternal home. And so let's come, dear family, let's come to this table the table of the Lord, to magnify him from our hearts, to magnify the one who died for us and exalting the name of the Lord who rose from the dead in victory over sin and death. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Dear Heavenly Father, you are worthy of all to be magnified and adored. And your name is to be exalted forever. And Lord, we thank you uh, for each Lord's Day when we can assemble. Each day you've called us to do that by your grace in order to praise you and to grow in worshiping you in spirit and in truth together. Lord, we pray that this time of uh, corporate worship now would magnify you and honor you and glorify your holy name. We ask this in the name of the one who died for us and rose in victory, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.